Hi, I'm Darnell with Wave Oven Recipes, and this is my 30-day review of the Gourmia French Door Air Fryer Oven. I'll say up front, generally speaking, that this air fryer oven, it's pretty good. It uh, is able to cook, you know, overall cook things, you know, pretty decent. There are some things that I do want to go into in some detail. I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's the perfect cooker, but I'll get into all of that as we go along. If you have not already seen it, please definitely see my initial review. If you're looking for a review where a bunch of cooks are done and testing and all that stuff, that's all in the initial review. That's what that's for. This review is my 30-day follow-up where I follow up and talk about my experiences using the cooker for a month. And also there's some other earlier videos than this already out of some cooks and Lord willing, even after this, for you know some time, there'll be some other cooks that may come out with this cooker as well. But here, I just kind of talk to you about you know my feelings about the cooker, and also later on, we'll talk about it in comparison with some others. But I will say, like I said, generally it cooks well. At 450, it does best, in my opinion, as far as its cooking. Things that you need to cook really hot at 450, it does really well on. For things you need to cook at lower temps, it can cook them just fine, but it may take a little longer than with some other cookers cooking them. Or you may just have to up the temp just a little bit more than you would if it's a temp below 450. Reason being is that the front door is not, not insulated, okay? It's like a French door air fryer oven and it doesn't have an insulated door there. So, you know, I mean, they, they could insulate a French door air fryer oven, but not this one. So, it's not insulated. It has some noticeable gaps there that, you know, air can slip out of. And so, especially on the tents below 450, things aren't going to cook as fast as they would in some other air fryer ovens that have more insulation. Now, all the same, overall, the cooker is able to cook things pretty evenly overall despite there being some you know gap at the front and things you will notice that food kind of in the front may take a little longer like your proteins may take a little longer to cook in the front than the back but it's not like you need to necessarily spin to get browning all over things seem to brown pretty evenly because you've got the air fry fan right there on the side so things seem to brown pretty evenly overall but the meat you know, especially with meats, they're not going to necessarily cook as fast, especially up front. So that's just something to keep in mind, but still all the same, it's a pretty decent cooker. I do have some other things I do want to talk about that I have notes on that are some issues with the cooker, in my opinion. And one issue is that there's no pause after a preheat when you try and put your food in. It says add food and you know while it's beeping saying add food it does that for some seconds and you got to get your food in right away if you don't it just starts counting down it'd be good if when you open the door during the preheat that it stopped or maybe just give you a certain you know some minutes to get in there and get your food in before, so you could just hit start yourself but it's not like you get time to put food in and hit start yourself you don't get a pause when you open the door so that you can close it and then it start going ahead and cooking. You have to hurry up, get your food in, and then, you know, the time's probably already counting down by the time you got your food in there. And also, when you're in the middle of cooking, you have to make sure that you hit the pause button before you open the door because the door doesn't auto-pause. The doors don't auto-pause. Also, there's no light inside of this cooker. It would be nice if it had a light because, you know, that kind of helps you see what you're doing in there. But there's no light, so you just got to kind of, you know, if you don't have good lighting in your kitchen, you know, I think that's something for you to consider. But, um, you know, since the inside is kind of a silvery, you know, stainless steel looking inside, you you know, it kind of ref reflects light pretty decent if you got decent lighting in your kitchen. But all the same, it's nice to have a light inside of a cooker. One other thing I wanted to mention is that the cooker has a long cool down period after using it. So after you use it, you're going to hear a fan running for maybe 10 minutes or so. Just running. It's, you know, not going to be running really loud, but still it's going to be running. So, you know, just leave it. Just leave it alone. 
you know, however long it needs, it will eventually stop, but it's something to be aware of. I also wanted to mention, and this is a, a good one, the cooker is able to, you're able to make changes on the fly easy. Like if you want to change time or temp, you can just, you know, hit the time and temp buttons while in the middle of a cook and it'll change for you real nice and easy. I do like that. But there is no way to skip a preheat if a function requires a preheat. So like air fryer requires a preheat. You gotta, you know, let it go through the preheat. There's no way to skip that. If you want to put your food in during the preheat, that of course is up to you. Now I want to talk about my experience using the various functions in this cooker. First off, uh, toast. It's able to toast just fine. No issues there. Toast evenly. Toast just fine. So it's a decent toaster. You know, if you want to use it as, you know, kind of your combo air fryer toaster oven, it does good with the toast. Now with bake, bake works just fine. Things cook fairly even. So it does a decent job on bake you know if you want a little oven you know this can get that job done in my opinion I will say that uh, roast works fine but with roast you like I said earlier are going to need to up that temp a little or leave your food in longer because you notice with something like a roast when you're cooking those big proteins or something you know you notice it more when there's like air gaps or something that cause one part of the food to not cook as quickly as the rest or your food needs to set in there longer. You've got to compensate for that with this cooker when you're using roast. Broil is a function that works just fine. No issues there with broil. With pizza, the pizza function works fine, works good, but you want to make sure that you use the rack, the wire rack, when you're cooking with pizza. The manual has an error talking about using the pan for pizza, and I did demonstrate in the initial review just so you would see what would happen if you do their instructions which I knew all along probably wasn't the way you want to go because I've done this plenty of times but just wanted to show all the same in the initial review what would happen if you did so make sure to use a wire rack with pizza in my opinion that's my personal recommendation despite what they have in their manual um, convection bake convection bake works well it's a good way to, you know, get a little fan action going to help convect the air, help speed up the cook a little bit. So, you know, if you want the convection bake for your cooks, that works out really well. You do need to maybe up your temp a couple more degrees than you usually would with an air fryer oven. Um, not a couple, when I say a couple, you know, maybe 15, 25 degrees more. But you want to compensate for the air gap a little bit. Now, the hydrate works very well. I've used dehydrate and so the dehydrate function works well. It's able to get down to those low temps and dehydrate your food good so I like that. I will say that I did use reheat a lot on this cooker and reheat works very well. It doesn't dry your food out and the food you know is really evenly cooked. So reheat works really nice and literally used it in place of microwave I'll get into that later but you know of course cooking in a cooker like this is going to take a few more minutes than a microwave but definitely was able to reheat anything I want to reheat just fine and it can you know if you don't mind taking the extra time and you know also some other things to consider this is great if you don't want to use a microwave to use this now air fry works very well as I mentioned especially at 450 the air fry functions cool now these other functions they have different names but to me they're all air fry so basically the fries function the wings function the bacon's function the snacks function the vegetable function seafood function to me they're all air fry in my opinion I guess they just you know gave you another button to press in my opinion I, I didn't notice anything special or different from you know using those so and you know for seafood you know I think roast works just fine in this cooker doing seafood in my opinion the keep warm is the only function that I didn't use I just didn't 
have anything that I just needed to keep warm over time. But I did use, as far as I recall, all the other functions for something or multiple times. And they all work out pretty decent as I described. Now, the user interface on this cooker is real easy to use, real easy to understand. No issues there. Now, one big negative on this cooker, in my opinion, is the ability to manage smoke. This cooker is very bad with anything that creates smoke, and I mean very, because like I said, it's got the air gaps, and that smoke comes right out. Um, I did bacon in here one time, because even putting the wet paper towels underneath to catch drippings and all that good stuff was not sufficient. The, this cooker, anything with smoke, you're going to see it and, you know, it's not going to be fun. So, you know, if you need a cooker that can manage smoke, well, my opinion, this ain't it. This is not it. And uh, for me too, it's not it. So, you know, that, you know, despite all the pluses and the good things that this thing can do as far as cooking, you know, the smoke is a real bad problem and that's something to consider. Um, I will say that the cooker is not very loud. It's not silent as far as noise, but it's not loud at all. Now with cleaning, I do want to talk to you about cleaning the cooker. Cleaning is fairly easy. You know, you can just wipe the inside with a wet soapy rag and you know, then wipe it off and all that good stuff. The air fry basket, you can, you know, I usually put this in the top rack of the dishwasher after I knock the excess off. Things clean off pretty good. The bake pan, I did use it a time or two without lining it, and you can see that you get some pretty tough stains. So always, in my opinion, always line that uh, bake pan before you use it. And I do want to show you inside, you know, and I didn't do, I don't do anything special to clean the inside of my cooker. Some people think that I've got some secret. I don't. I, you know, it's just regular old dish soap and water and whatever one you know will do and so you know inside keeps itself pretty clean it doesn't you know cause a lot of splatter as a cooker you know goes it's just not one that makes a whole bunch of splatter i do want to show you though that the pan underneath does catch a bit of mess and it doesn't come off easy so you know that's something to consider and i know there are different things that I could use to get that off. That to me is not a concern. But for you who it is a concern, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Now I want to talk about this Gourmet in comparison with some other cookers. And I'm going to mention the caloric French door air fryer oven since I did do an initial review of that and it has French doors. Um, this gourmet, in my opinion, is way better. And if you saw my initial review of the caloric, um, you probably know that I really wasn't a fan of it. I really just didn't like it. The interface, that click and dial, and all that, I totally just didn't like it. But the uh, gourmet, I really like, you know, nice digital interface. And, you know, except for the smoke issue, you know, it's a very nice cooker, you know. You can get over the, you know, having a little gap in the front of the door there. It's a very nice cooker. You know, it's got its smoke issue, but beyond that, it, it's pretty decent. And so, you know, overall, one or the other, I definitely like the Gourmet, and that's my opinion for me. Um, versus the Emerald Lagasse Power Air Fryer 360 or the XL, um, I'll just say I can cook bacon in the Emerald without any problems at higher temps. You know, if I use like the wet paper towel technique, they, they're able to do just fine. So the Emerald, you know, definitely gets the nod for me. Definitely will be the one that I got to pick, you know, of either variety of it. So, you know, the Emerald's better there. Um, this Gourmet versus the Cuisinart Chef's Convection Toaster Oven. I prefer the Cuisinart. The Cuisinart, as some of you may remember, is bad with smoke too. It's, you know, same design as the New Way Bravo XL Smart Oven. But, you know, it's bad with smoke too. But 
this, I think the Gourmet is a little worse with smoke than the, um, the Cuisinart or the New Wave. But the Cuisinart has a lot more options and functions. So does the New Wave. So I like those better than this Gourmet. Now, versus the Ninja Foodi XL Pro Air Fry Oven. And um, as far as the Ninja, you know, my Ninja works fine. I know they had some quality issues for a while. I'm hoping that that's all cleared up now, by now. So, you know, we're talking about a Ninja without, compared to a Ninja without any of the issues some had that were going on for a little while there. The Ninja definitely wins. If you want an air fryer oven, um, the best one is the Ninja, in my opinion. If you get a decent Ninja Foodi XL Pro air fryer oven, it's the best. It's just the best. So, you know, the Ninja wins. Now, my overall champ used to be, and now we'll get into this talk about microwaves, used to be the Cuisinart microwave air fryer because it's a microwave. It's a very hot and fast air fryer. Hotter and faster than, you know, most air fry oven, dedicated air fry ovens, and it's a microwave too. So it was my overall champ. But I've had to do away with the Cuisinart microwave air fryer because of personal concerns that I have come to know of regarding microwaves. That is not the purpose of this video. That is a matter that you can research on your own. I'm not going to get into it at all. I'm not going to answer questions about it. It's something you can research yourself. But I am now 100% off microwaves. Haven't used microwave for a good while. Like I said, this worked just fine replacing microwave. And, you know, a few more minutes, no problem. Does great. Able to do everything I need to do from literally melting butter and, my, I mean, uh, defrosting and anything that might have habitually been defaulted to using a microwave. I'm able to do it in a cooker like this without any problem. You just, you know, learn your cooker and you'll be just fine. But, you know, that's all up to you. But for you who are like myself, who have reasons why you don't use a microwave and you no longer even like a microwave um, this can you know do a good job it's just that smoke problem that is an issue so basically with all of that said I do want to mention that this video you know nothing in the video is sponsored in the video description there's lots of ways to help the channel there's my cookbook cookbook has basically recipes that are pretty cross compatible between cookers you can usually use those same recipes across multiple different types of cookers. Also, you can see other ways to help the channel. And so with all of that said, also my blog, I always like to tell you, you can always check out my blog, superwayloverrecipes.com. But with all that said, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Leave comments, subscribe, hit that notification icon, and good eating.